Let's go to Lanzarote! <laughs> <laughs> A couple who recently, after years of dreaming, bought ourselves a beautiful 40-foot Colvick Victor sailboat. Life is short and the world is wide and there are so many lessons to be learned. Laughs <laughs> shared, people met, adventures had, and nautical miles to be sailed. And this is our way of sharing it all with you. Welcome to the Tailey. Bloody doing it. <laughs> we had spent the last week preparing our boat to sail the furthest distance yet. 680 nautical miles. We were heading to La Graciosa, a tiny island just northwest of Lanzarote in the Canary Islands. After a rainy, cold few weeks, the prospect of 30 degree temperatures and warm water was one we were really excited for. In our element, look at that. little update it's now four o'clock and we've gone about 40 nautical miles so we're making good headway our average speed is like between 5.5 and 6.5 knots so really nice average speed Whee! <laughs> how's it going out here it's good making good headway at the moment yeah we enjoy this wind whilst we can because we've got a day or two of light wind coming up yeah but hopefully it will miss us the light patch but yeah we might be so far ahead of it zach and we might miss it completely yeah we might it does get oh we've just gone three thousand meters of water as well really three thousand yeah wow yeah. that's cool we're properly off the shelf now that's cool it's the deepest water we've been in yeah it is
Bucket out? Yeah. You got it. Oh, there's a little mahi, I think. No way. Yes, yeah, little mahi. Woo! Oh, you... oh, amazing! Okay, you can get the bucket. Yes. Bucket. Yep. Okay, go further. Okay, just careful of the. It's alright, don't hold that high. It's the biggest picture of course. Your dad's gonna blow that. Yeah. You proud of yourself? Yeah. Wow, it's a beautiful fish. Proud of you? I'll bring out some sushimi in a minute. Yeah. <laughs> When you turn your bow to the horizon and head out into the ocean, with your destination being a small island, hundreds of miles away, your perspective on a lot of things slowly starts to shift. Time almost ceases to exist, and instead your days are defined by the rising and setting of the sun and by key events. So rather than in a chronological account of this passage, let's start at event one, losing fish cake. We sailed with our friends Martin and Dennis on fish cake and we're planning on sticking with them, at least for the first few days of this passage. However, as much as we love sailing wing on wing when downwind, it does sometimes have its downsides. Throughout the first night, the wind was blowing 25 knots and we had to stay on a very specific course so we didn't risk jibing. Fish cake took another approach and came up into the wind slightly on a broad reach. Whilst this wouldn't usually make too much difference, because of the speed we were going, by morning we figured out we were miles apart. Luckily, we managed to stay in VHF communication for a few more days, but the comms got worse and worse over time. Sailing vessel fish cake, this is Taylor, go ahead, over. Left coast channel 13, 1 3. All received, going to channel 1 3, over. Can you repeat that? Over. I think they've gone, Zach. What? I think they've gone. Oh, I did. Fish cake, this is Taylor. Do you read me? Over. Event two was catching a fish. Whilst Zach often spearfishes, putting a line in the water and hoping for the best was something we weren't too used to. But 
The fish were biting and we ended up catching ourselves a beautiful mahi-mahi. We didn't let the lack of a net or gaff stop us and after bucketing the fish, <laughs> we enjoyed it raw, in fish tacos and grilled with garlic. The most frustrating event of the passage was the weather. We always knew we had have a day of higher winds, then one of lighter winds. But after those two days, we were predicted a steady 15 to 20 knots of northerly wind. Our plan on the second day was to leave the engine off and drift, but with the bigger swell, our sails were slapping all over the place. So we decided to put the motor on for a bit. Now 11.30, I've just come in from my night watch. I'm about to go to bed. Zach's about to go and watch. He's just there. But we're exactly halfway there, which is really nice. And the wind is at zero knots. <laughs> so yeah, we're very much in that no wind zone. But fingers crossed by the morning, the winds will pick up a bit and we'll be able to properly sail. We are sailing when the gusts come, but there we go. This ended up being 28 hours and we were so delighted when the wind finally picked up and we could switch her off. Good feeling? That's really good. I can hear my thoughts again. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't say being offshore is lonely, but it sure is a unique feeling that kind of can't be experienced without sailing out to sea and disconnecting from normal life. We had lost fish cake days earlier, and aside from one cargo ship passing 15 nautical miles from us one night, we really didn't see any other life out there. That was until event four happened. It's 11 o'clock in the morning and just washed my hair, which is a really good feeling. We had a little bird come and join us overnight, which is the, the sweetest thing. And it stayed with me from my first night shift until... Oh, what time did it go, Zach? Uh, like nine this morning, probably. Yeah, it was there for hours and it was just so sweet. It was nestled into the, um, by the solar panel and then it flew off at one point because well, it was asleep. Zach so came up the um, stairs, looked at it, it opened its eyes and was like, ah, <laughs> flew off and came straight back again. So that was really sweet. And it hopped over my hand. So yeah, he was a nice little visitor, but he's flown off. We think he's gone to the same places we're going to go. So might see him there. Try to eat any more food? No. We had well and truly settled into passage life and were loving the slower pace of life of our days being dictated by the watches we would do. The strength of the wind and the gentle bob of the waves.
but it was still exciting when after six days at sea we could finally see land. How are you this fine morning? I'm good. I'm waiting to see land which should be pretty soon. We've got about 47 nautical miles to go. Woo! Thanks for watching. Next week, we catch back up with Marta and Dennis and take you around La Graciosa, a tiny volcanic island that we can't believe we had just sailed to. This place is absolutely unlike anywhere I've been before. It's so, I can't even explain, it's amazing.